Yeah. What's going on? Live from the basement. The right way. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's start, let's start the show. We're in a secret location right now. <laughs> your, on eyes the run. Are, your eyes are not deceiving you. On the run eating. Your eyes are not deceiving you. Shout out to Nori. On the run eating right now. Making it happen. What's up, y'all? It's been a long time. I know y'all missed us. Let's get the good brother. Ian Dunlap in here, Market Mondays. We back, it's Monday, right? A big, Happy. big, big show. What is it, today's the 9th? Happy August 9th. Shout out to everybody that was uh, in attendance for that versus battle. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to the versus battle, man. <laughs> shout out to. You know he was in there. There was no other way we had to be in there. That wasn't an option. To, shout out to the family, Jim Jones, Styles P. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But um, congratulations to the locks, Jada Kiss. Y'all heard it, 914. Stellar, stellar performance. And uh, shout out to Dipset, too, man. They, they put on a show, man. That whole, that whole battle was just epic, man. So yeah. uh, Shout out to Jimmy Cam. We got a chance to be there. We just front row. Um, it, was a, it was a dope, 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 dope vibe. Yeah, definitely. Legendary night. Legendary yeah. night. Absolutely. A, a, a historic night in hip hop. Shout out to uh, everybody in uh, DC. I pulled up out there real quick. Shout out to my man, Hector. He invited me to his Juve event. I was pleasantly surprised. Turnout was crazy. The vibe was crazy. I definitely will come. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I had fresh kicks on. They're like, nah, we got to throw paint on you, man. I said, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, 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 no. Not with some of the kicks you got. No. <laughs> I said, nah. We can Next time, next time. Uh, so shout out to the whole DC, shout out to Hector, shout out to the Trinity Massive, shout out to the Jamaican Massive Haitian, everybody in the Caribbean, shout out to all y'all. Uh, it was it was festive, it was definitely festive. Yeah, how was, how was your vacation here? Amazing, man, God is good. <laughs> I see you had a good time. No? You said what? I saw the pics you putting up, man, they looking classic. I'm working on my Ian Scorsese thing, <laughs> so, you know. Just trying to practice. Shout out Ty, shout out uh, Alex, media. They're like, yo, get the reps in. So, you know, we got to continue to diversify. And that's the one thing about being an entrepreneur. You have to be able to do some of everything. Create content, slides, be humble, gracious, network. Like, <laughs> I'm learning that from y'all. Like, got to network, kiss babies, shoot content. So, yeah, got to got to do some everything. Yeah, man. So and shout out to our brothers at Eastside Go. Oh yeah, yeah, shout out to Eastside Golf. My boy, uh, Elijah Wan and Earl, man. We got some legendary situations cooking up with them. Um, so yeah, let's like get Like Hakeem Elijah Wan or? No, no, no. Shout out to Elijah Wan though. <laughs> yeah. they, I mean, y'all uh, set the bars, y'all got Usain, y'all get him. <laughs> Jordan, know. come on. Yeah. You never know. You never know. Um, <laughs> nah, 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 shout out to them for sure. Um, yeah, so we are in Atlanta. Uh, this week, if you notice the change of uh, background, yes, that are y'all setting up early, huh? That, Hold on, let me, let me look. <laughs> that, that is that is a stripper pole in the back. But <laughs> it's not our house. It's not our house. It's not okay. our house. But we are in Atlanta, so it's very fitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rashad gonna want to wrap up super early today. <laughs> 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 I'm mean, gonna get through these slides. Rashad gonna be like, "Oh, gotta go." <laughs> like, you Eight fifteen out there. Yeah. Grand opening, grand closing. Yep, yeah, real yeah. quick. Oh man, uh, we got a lot. We got a lot to talk about today. But before we start, just some announcements. Everybody has been asking for a Toro episode. It's been a number one requested episode for months now. So you can stop asking. It's finally here. Shout out to my boy Maddie J. Tomorrow, eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. The Toro, and even bigger than Toro, how to start a car rental business. Something that a lot you don't really realize the how profitable that can be and how useful that is mm -hmm. until you start to think about it like you know it's really practical most people don't drive their cars all, all day um you can rent it out and uh actually make money it's just like airbnb think about airbnb but for cars mm -hmm. so um that is tomorrow at eight o'clock a whole whole lot of game um classic eyl type of episode where we just give game for like 70 minutes straight so yeah. check that underrated out. as hell too like 
Yeah. Maddie's is, is acumen a, is crazy. He a brilliant mind. He's a yeah. brilliant mind. So they had the ability to sit down with him. And we was, I mean, we probably had this is probably the most questions we ever had in a episode. We yes. just was laying them with the questions yeah. and he was just answering them back to back to back. So yeah. a lot of y'all gonna take a lot away from this this episode. And like you said, it's one of those things people keep asking about. And I think we mentioned it on the Breakfast Club. So people are like, wait, I need more of that. Can y'all tell me? And so yeah. voila, it is here tomorrow tomorrow at eight. I'll make sure y'all check it out. Yeah, and, and his uh, acumen. Go, no, go ahead. I got it, I got it, I got it. No, I wouldn't give like his credit too on the marketing side to be able to draw attention in. Some of you may see his IG page and think that he's like actually with the clothing and all that, but like <laughs> he is great at taking that attention and funneling it right into business. Yeah. Like I can see there's not like he loves to get fly, but I can see he's doing it to grab to gravitate and pull in attention like the PT Barnum thing and then monetize it. So for my entrepreneurs, you see Dare Grace do it. Like he'll come out with the 92 gold braces and then <laughs> the guns and be like, hey, I got this investing thing. I'm like, job well done. So even in that, you guys need to start to look at people's content to see what they're doing inside of the actual thing. So I, I agree. Yeah. He, he made a post today about how his hat is an asset. Maddie's, a, Maddie's, a, Maddie's one of one. He's a one yeah. of one. The blue top hat? Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. So special announcement. Uh, being that we was at the versus battle last week and we got a chance to see, you know, a legendary live versus legendary dips and you seen like Styles and, and, and uh, Jim Jones was really like trolling each other for like three weeks. They were the main Sour. ones mm -hmm. trolling each other. You know? It's all about relationships. Um, you don't know who I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so of course, Styles and Jim Jones were both EYL alumni, both great guys. So we're having a fest in Atlanta. Um, and they're both entrepreneurs, Jim Jones and Crypto Styles and, and um, Health with the juice bars yeah. and juice ph pharmacy for life. So yep. versus part two, we are putting Jim Jones and Styles on a panel together, health and wellness panel, where they're going to be talking about entrepreneurship. They're going to be talking about crypto. They're going to be talking about health. Um, and yeah, we just you know, had to do that for the culture. Yeah. Like, you know what that's that, like, and that's what day will that be for everyone who wants to attend? That is Sunday, the 29th. Sunday. Yeah. Gotcha. That's going to be That's the same day that you're, 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 you're going to be on. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. This, this yeah. is like that. This is when we talk about the evolution of hip hop, like this is it. We're watching history. I know somebody yeah. said that to us. Like, make sure we document these moments. Make sure we are present in these moments because they are historic, man. These are two dudes mm -hmm. from the streets that actually it has nothing to do with music. It actually has to do with everything that they're doing outside of music. So it's beautiful. Make sure you're there. Make and sure I, you're I there. think that that's going to be dope too because everybody's sort of, they're actually really great guys. They, yeah. They're yeah. friends. Um, but outside of the music, you know, they've grown as entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. business people. So we sort of battle on stage with music, but now we can hear them speak about business investing and, yeah. you know, things that you might not necessarily, you know, know them for. So, yeah. and they love talking about it too. So that's great. Yeah. So shout out to both of those guys, man. Uh, you know, Invest Fest just keeps getting better and better. <sighs> Literally. We, <laughs> I don't even want to say anything else. <laughs> we might have, it's top secret. It's, top secret. it's called top secret. I don't even want to say anything. It's called the <laughs> a couple managers need to answer their phone. A couple artists need to let me get my favorites yeah, real yeah. quick. I love y'all. <laughs> there's, there's something cooking. There's something yeah, cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So if you're interested, go to investfest.com. Um, check it out. I think the pre-sale ends on Thursday. So you guys got a couple days for that. Um, but let's get into this, man. I don't want to take oh, too we didn't, much time. Yeah, we didn't, let's just run down really quickly the EYL new schedule. So Wednesday we got a class of virtual events and uh virtual commercial property with uh, a conundrum. Um, shout out to her. She's one of our professors in our professor series. She always is, does an amazing she's job. Amazing. Yeah, she's incredible. Uh, shout out to our brother, MG. He has his breaking bread on Thursday at seven. Man, uh, what up? Wellness, uh, Health and Wellness Club on Friday at seven. And then you got your financial planning class on, on Saturday, Saturday at 12 p.m. And shout out to everybody that was in the book club yesterday. And shout out to our mature earners who were part of that as well. Um, every day is something, man. Every day is-, is you, Your call is on 12, 12 p.m. on Saturday? Yeah. Yeah, 12, 12 p.m. Yeah, yeah. All right, Jumping on? Through. Yeah, I'm a side through. All right. Oh, there you man. have it. Oh, man. The master investor will be in the building. That's a fact. All right, Troy, let's read the disclaimer. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, first and foremost, this episode of Market Money is brought to you by Ally Financial. Ally is an option if you're looking to bank or invest. Ally uh, is a leading digital finance ser financial service company with passionate customer service and innovative financial solutions. They are relentlessly focused on doing it right and being a trusted financial service provider to both customers and communities. So... Get with Ally to make the most of your money so you can save, invest, and spend on things that matter to you. Uh, so shout out to our good folks at Ally. 
I got my disclaimer really quickly. Let's get this out of the way. So number one, you know how this works, do your own research. Our content is intended to be used and must be used for informational purposes only. It's very important to do your own analysis before making any investment based on your own personal circumstances. You should take independent financial advice from a professional in connection with or independently research and verify any information that you find on our show and wish to rely upon, whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise. This is a message brought to you by the good folks at Earn Leisure and the good brother, Ian Dunlap, the massive investor, aka Two Stock Shakur. Hey, yeah. Trade holder. <laughs> I appreciate it. Your read game is incredible, too. <laughs> Segway game, impeccable. <laughs> We're working on yeah, some it things. Is. The, floor, the floor is yours, Ian. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let me know if you guys can see my screen. Yep, I got you. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's go. I love you guys. Uh, first, I want to say happy belated uh, birthday to my grandmother, to my family. Um, I love you dearly. Man, like, I want to tell you guys that time and your tribe is the most important asset. Please put that in chat. As you get older, one of the things that sucks, you know, for those of us that are in our 30s, we then become the, the front line for our family. And sometimes as you begin to lose your elders, you wish that you would have spent more time and had more conversations and uh, man, ate some of that fire cooking that your grandma or granddad made. So I want you to text your family members right now. And I want you to also call your grandparents um, when the show is over, because it's crazy to think that I don't have any. So if you have yours, uh, please reach out to them. Um, man, this shit broke my heart. Rest in peace to my guy, Lucky. Um, I went to know it. Like, Lucky was one of the most charismatic people I've ever met in my life. So, like, <clears throat> shout out to everybody from 219. I'm going to do, like, a 219 thing, and I'm going to move on real quick. But, like, when, when Jilla and Skrilla was, like, the hottest thing on earth at the crib and, and CCA and Grind, shout out to C. Lucky was the one, like, yo, Jill is the one. And I'm like, man, like, his love for rap music and entertaining everybody, he had one of the, like, most charismatic energies. Like, he was, like, Tupac-esque in that way. Um, and I was coming back off the trip. And I saw my friends posting that he had passed. And I was like, man, life is so short. Like, and I know we say it at the end of every show, but I think we all, and me especially, we need to make more time to reach out to our friends because you never know when uh, the last time you'll be able to talk to them. So rest in peace to Derek Washington. Um, lucky, man, I love you. And to the family, please reach out to me. Love y'all. Um, disclaimer, please do not copy, remix, reproduce any of the material without written permission because the lawyer is going to do the lawyer thing. And we don't want that. All right. Y'all got to quit playing. Get Market Mondays to number one and number two. This is what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to give away 1,000 stock club scholarships, 5,000 snipers scholarships, and $10,000 cash to one lucky winner. Please put Market Mondays number one or two, please, in chat. I, I got to incentivize y'all to do this. <clears throat> so in this week's episode of I Told You So, 70% of Warren Buffett's portfolio is concentrated <laughs> in just four stocks. Everyone's like, how many should we have? 20. To Listen, I can't tell you what to do. Consult your advisor. But if you want to run it up, you probably should only have four or six. You can only know everything about maybe five to seven companies if you're really good. If you do this for a living, maybe 15. But six is a sweet number. Please put six is the magic number. Um, this brother put this amazing post on IG and I have to share it. Um, time is what the wealthy acquire. Please put that in chat. Time is what the wealthy acquire. Majority of people think that wealth is about money and it's not to be true. When actual money is time and time is wealth, cash is only 50% of wealth. I would argue a third because wealth is health, cash, and time. Please put that in chat. Health, cash, and time. Dividends get reinvested or spent and a principal amount should be designed and protected towards growth. Assets by time, by sourcing people's needs, the cash will buy us more time. So the number one reason I'm like, hey, don't worry about flipping. 200% sounds great until you have two or three kids, a mortgage, two car payments. And then you're like, man, it really wasn't enough. You want to, I'll tell you guys the big secret that, that I'll go into detail at InvestFest, which I'm gonna put on the show for. But you want to have your money working for you indefinitely, but I'll give you a hack on how to do that tonight. Um, and somebody pointed out on Data Roma, when, and I'll do a full breakdown on this next week. But um when I was talking about the ownership, so 723 for VOO, it was the ownership rank, not the number of people who owned it. So when I'm wrong, 
I have to come out, come out here and do a little bit of straightening on myself. Um, so if you go look at Square, you can see the ownership rank was really high. VOO was long, uh, lower than Square. So I wanted to make that statement to make sure I got that corrected. Um, a week or so ago, or two weeks ago, Amazon dropped to a really low price. And kudos to Stock Club. I gave you guys a great price. But I want to ask you in chat, did you use the 200-day moving average to get in on an Amazon drop? Write this down, please. Use one year and the day chart. So when I ask you, how long do you want to go out? Look at one year. Use the day chart as your way to get in. If you go look at it right now, that EMA would have put you exactly on the price of where to get in. And you would have probably had three or four dollars worth of drawdown. So because a couple of Saturdays ago when I was on a call, people was like, well, I don't know how to get in. I'm going to break down all five ways to get in tonight, but I've given you more than enough ways to get in. Just use the ones that we give. 200 is one way. These are 11 tips to make your life better. And this is one Rashad has been stressing like hell for the last year. And I'm finally listening to network. Your network is going to be so key. It doesn't matter. And you've seen it in Kobe's career. You can, you can be the greatest at whatever your endeavor or your field is. But if you don't network with the right people and continue, continuously build that base, you're going to be at a disadvantage opposed to someone who is networking more. And you see Troy and Rashad going all over networking, kissing babies. They're going to be in Zimbabwe next week, then come back from Best Fest. Like you have to build that base of people to get up early. If you want to be a millionaire or make half a million dollars a year, they're not going to do it waking up at, at noon. I don't care what software you build, what kind of automation you have. You have to get up early. Stay focused, watch less TV, read more books. I know some of you hate reading, but every damn secret that you want in life in a field has been written in the book. You have to dig through them. Avoid time wasters, invest in your health, take calculated risk, write down your goals, work smarter at scale, and do something that you absolutely believe in. Um, kudos to one of the Stock Club members. We talked about Moderna last week for getting 1,193% um, return on Moderna. If you have not invested in Moderna yet, please put not yet, but over the next two or three years, I think it would be wise for you to do so. Um, another person here got a 258% return on Moderna. And then from the free info, which we do every week, Bitcoin, Ethereum, ADA, which Kayla calls Bay, Bitcoin, um, ADA, and Ethereum. These are some nice gains. Ethereum has been running like crazy. If you've missed your spot, I'll be sure to give you guys a spot in ADA later today. Um, Bitcoin recovered in 63 days. And I told you guys, and I know it sounded crazy, right? When I said that it will it recover in 63 days, but this is the lesson that you have to know. Using your setup to get into the market for every asset that you trade and every stock that you invest in, you have to know once it hits that low, how long will it take to recover? Grab your notebook. I can't show you my notes from Invest Fest. So grab your notebook. And for every stock that you're invested in, so I know you guys are going to listen and not go over six. So on average, I want you to go through five years. And once it hits a dramatic low, how many days does it take to recover? You will have your own formula for Apple, AMV, TSM, NVIDIA, Starbucks, DraftKings, everything to know how long it will take to recover. That will also give you a guideline for how long you need to be patient in that stock. Ada. We call 103 before a hit. I went up. I'm going to go on a record again with the Dream Team and Kayla to say, Ada, a good acquisition target is 103. Please put 103 in chat. Um, next week, we're going to give you some exciting details. You know what? I'm going to launch it at Invest Fest. Come Sunday after Jim, and I don't want Jim kicking Styles and Styles pulling on Jim, but after they get done, I'm going to talk to us about collectively investing in crypto no there's no management fee any of that because i don't believe in that but i'll reveal at invest fest how you can invest in crypto at scale with us if you guys want a live trading room with the dream team it's something we were talking about today put yes in chat and if we get enough yeses it's something we'll consider doing in the mornings on mondays and fridays uh crude fell apart like crazy last night now i want you to take this in consideration because we talked about it last week when our esteemed a guest from investopedia was on that fell apart. And then gold also had a flash crash. Now they said it's partially because of technical reasons, which if you look at the all time high and you draw fibs, which we talked about from high to low, gold, uh, gold did get to that 50% retracement and then kind of slid back. Right. And they said there were some liquidity issues, but anytime you have two major assets like that fall, 
within a 72 hour period, there is a bigger, more pressing issue that is there that is not being talked about. Please keep your eye on that because we could have a dramatic drop. Um, Sunday, August 29th, when I present, I'm going to be going over long-term investing, swing trading and day trading. I need to know from you guys though, do you want me to cover more gems on long-term investing or more on day trading futures? This past Saturday, I spent six hours working on my outline. I was in the zone. I felt like Jada. I'm like, I got to get prepared. Like I, I talked to uh, Jamal and, and Shadi. I was like, yo, Jada put on a clinic. I got to be dialed in. I'm not going to wait till like three days before. Outline's done. But let me know if you want me to cover more of long-term investing or uh, trading futures. And this is a great gem that I need you guys to hear from the legendary Tim Grover. The greatest inner circle individuals are so small. Distance becomes their best friend. Distance from their competition, okay? Distance from others. Everyone tries to fit in a group, okay? You're growing up, want to be part of this fraternity. I want to hang out mm -hmm. with these people. I want to hang out over here. Who do you idolize the most? The ones that stand alone. The ones that create distance between you and the competition and everybody else, okay? You have all your friends. That they may have all started off together. And what happens is when you they know they can't keep up, okay? You create distance. You want them to come with you, but they don't have the ability sure. to. They don't have the discipline. They don't have the sacrifice. So distance has to become your best friend in order for you to achieve the best at what you want to do. I know these are completely different thoughts than what other people tell. What other people tell you: surround yourself with positive people. You know what that means? That means lie face so I can feel good about myself. <laughs> And I don't want you to cut off all of your friends on this journey because we'll see those posts a cut off the five people like you have to keep your friends that that are your day ones that have been supportive. But a lot of times we want support to go to where we need to go. But we don't want to do it alone. That's why when you guys are like, hey, I need an accountability partner. I'm like, no, you need to be accountable because if your trading buddy makes a three hundred thousand dollar trade with you, they're not going to split half that money with you. I'm telling you that. Um, this is the reason why most people fail. I thought this message was absolutely amazing. The reason most people fail is because they give up what they want most for what they want now. Mm. The reason most people fail is because they give up what they want most for what they want now. If that was one message, it'd probably be that. Like, people don't fail because they're not talented or skilled or whatever. It's like you give up what you want most for what you want now. And how many of us have ever giving up what we truly want for the short term. We all have. Let's make the adjustment going forward. Um, it's 2021, it's crazy. In nine years, we'll be in a new decade. 2010's won by so fast. Let's make the, the choice to be dedicated and not give up the long-term goal for the short term. And then for many of your 20s, um, let your uncles and us give you some advice. Um, check these tips out real quick and then we'll get back to the investing gyms. If you can give one piece of advice to a guy in his early 20s, what would it be? Do not move out of your parents' house until you've saved up at least 25 grand. Make friends and don't date. Don't date. Travel. Move out of your hometown. Get very acquainted with a primary care professional. Get a therapist. Buy a gun and get really good at using it. Get a passport and get really good yes. at using it. Go to a gym and work for an eight pack. You really have nothing but time. Pick up a sport and get good at it. Stop eating like a damn ninja turtle. Drink water. Wash your ass daily. Buy three suits. A black one, navy blue, heather gray. Each one should be tailored. Buy life insurance. The younger yes. you are, the cheaper it is. Most importantly, find and protect your peace. Remember that you were a man before her, you were a man with her, and now you'll be a man without her. Good luck. No Kevin Samuels, but fellas, go ahead. I'll put this in Stock Club. I want to be on a record for this. Um, and it's going to be salacious, and I know people are going to say that I'm wrong. The peak for Apple stock will be November 3rd, 2035. So a lot of you will be like, hey, when is it run? I know y'all gonna be like, do crazy. He don't know. And he's just making up shit now. I'm not. Apple's peak, November 3rd, 2035. I want to be on the record. Now, if y'all know this, hey, which was a good album on the low. Shout out to Nas. <laughs> <laughs> but if you guys go copy this, I'm coming up to the station. If one of y'all say this on TV. Love y'all. Um, uh, for those of you for futures, I know it may be difficult, but put this in chat. Your target for 
the bond market should be 33 ticks. Here's why. It takes the same amount of energy to hit a big target as it does a small target. The great thing is that ZB pays more. Um, so kudos to this brother who hit this target, but with seven contracts, and I want you guys to multiply 500 times seven, that was the initial investment into the market. The payout was $7,218.75. Great job. 33 ticks should be your primary target for Z and you. Um, accountability. At one point on the show, I said AMD would dip to 67.56. It didn't get there. I stopped at 72.50. The crystal ball was broken. I don't know if I didn't recalibrate it or I should have put it out when the moon, we had a full moon. Didn't get there. My bad. Sorry, I was off by a couple bucks. Ian doesn't know anything, right? So I want to be accountable and say that it didn't get there. But for those you got in in the 70s, great job. And hold for the long term. Going forward, a good spot is 102.62 for AMD to hold long term, either five or 10 years. Put a 102.62 in chat please. And kudos to my sis, Deborah. I've been telling you about it. She's been holding since 11 when it hit the all-time high. That's 11.13x from long-term investing only, no options. I want you to put in chat right now, long-term investing is the wave. Now go ask any day trader that you know and ask them, have they made 11x on a trade? Most have not. You can get the same kind of gains long-term investing with a great setup that you can from day trading and have the money working for you at the same time. Once again, I want to say squares is new JP Morgan. Please hold for the next 10 years. <clears throat> Here are the top 12 reasons that most traders fail. And please write this down. Most don't have good risk to reward ratio. So you want to risk one to make 11, write this down, or risk one to make 50. So if you're risking 2% of your capital in a trade, the target would then be 22%. Or if you're risking 2% and you want a 50X, you will be going for a target of 100%. If you stay within that ratio and you only take 48 trades or less per year, it's damn near impossible if you're trading with the trend to be able to hit the target. If you want a full breakdown of a great book on this is called The Complete Tur Turtle Traders by Michael Covell, go to chapter five and six. If you read those two chapters and never deviate, you'll be fine. A lot of traders end up blowing up their money and their account going for a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio and taking too many trades. Number two, most have unless unrealistic expectations. So when I ask a lot of you, like, how many trades are you going to take for the year? You like 800. I'm like, you can't take 800 trades on a year. You can't take 500 and at a high level. Rashad, Troy, like in, in your options, how many trades have you taken this year? Oh, like three. I probably did three. Yeah, not and you lot. guys can say whatever you go ahead. Rashad, go ahead and say it. No, not a lot for me. Not a lot. And arguably they're humble about it i'll say it for it for them to not trade all day every day because they run in all this other media and like they'll bust your ass <laughs> <laughs> trade selection is everything like and if i can be honest with you guys when you guys are like in my comments like well you don't know and you can't do i'm like i know and we'll get to the emotions part but if you don't have your emotions in check then therefore your trading plan is not in check i know you can't beat me because you can't stop over trading you know the people that are really good at trading? Like, go watch Bonowin's interview. Bonowin did not care anything about what I said, what Troy said. He stick to his plan, put on that nice grin, go about his business. One of the greatest traders I probably ever encountered. Those that are good at their craft don't have to declare to anybody else. But if you can stay within a sweet spot of 24 to 48, you'll be good. Third, most can't manage emotions. If you can't, I'm telling you, fasting is the way to go or do the 10 miles a day. Most don't do any research. You need to know the stocks or features that you're trading like the back of your hand. I could tell you everything about ESCB, UB, Crude, Russell, NASDAQ, Nikkei, Swiss Frank future up and down in my sleep. If I only had one hour of sleep, you need to know like the back of your hand. That is going to give you your edge. Um, if you're undercapitalized, you need to take even less trades and then also work more to build more capital because being undercapitalized puts you in a position to have to take riskier trades to build up your account. And that's only going to favor your broker. Most quit too early. I hate to say it. You're not going to be good in three months. Like that's why I'll go back and show you. I was talking about this 12 and 13 years ago before it was cool. It's going to take you maybe two or three years to get really good, to be great. It may take you five to seven. It's like none of you at nine years old start playing basketball and be like at 14, I'm ready to go to the league. 
as great as Mikey is, I don't think Mikey is ready for the NBA this season. And he's probably one of the greatest high schoolers ever, right? You have to get acclimated with the market enough to know what to do. But once you have that, not many will be able to beat you. Uh, most of undisciplined is the number one reason why people lose. Arrogance is a, is a big factor in it because it's not really about the indicator. It is about your risk to reward ratio. Please put in chat, risk to reward ratio is the greatest indicator of all time. Your RSI doesn't, you got like RSI. If RSI matters that much, take the charts off and just trade off RSI. When it gets to 30, watch how much you draw down. Short at 70 and see how well it does. Your risk to reward means everything. Delusion for the, all of you who are like, hey, I'm going to get 88,000% return in, in a year. Highly unlikely. And then ego is the biggest reason why most people end up losing as traders. I figured I'd give some content before I get into the ad stuff. I'm trying to give value first. Um, if you want to join a stock club, you want the four best stocks for your retirement, the best growth stocks to invest in, the best places to get caught out in the market by me, um, the two best places where to buy, 28 bonus picks on a year and additional uh, entries from the algorithm, Athena. You, uh, you can click the link in chat. The fellas will put the link in there for Stock Club. If I've ever made you money with Stock Club, please put dollar sign in chat. For all of you that joined on a flash sale between the first and the third, I appreciate you so much. If you have not gotten your login, please go to joinredpanda.com and the team there will be able to help you. I appreciate you so much. Um, if you want to join a crypto club, you want the five safest cryptocurrencies to invest in, a bonus call with me and a dream team, the three best prices where to get in, three bonuses every month, and three surprise bonus picks on a year. You guys can go to the site and get it. Uh, we'll have a private trading re retreat coming very soon, so we'll announce that soon. Trading After Dark will return in September. Um, I miss doing that with you guys and because you guys were asking some amazing questions about um, on every call. We normally have our stock club call at 9 p.m., but we're going to have it at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Subscribe to my YouTube. I'm going to, once we get to 100K, we're going to do a big giveaway. So if you guys want these bonuses, let's run those numbers up. And I want to go into business with 10 people of you, with 10 of the stock club members this year. So if you have a business idea or you have a business currently that you need an investor for, please send me a message in Telegram. If Red Panda's made you some money, please put Red Panda in chat, please. So if you guys had a big win today, Please write this down. Only use 4% of the capital on your next 20 tr trades. Let the euphoria of your gains wear off. What happens, and we all get the big hit. Let's say we get a fire win on AMD. We get a fire win on Microsoft or TSM. And then we'll go to the deep end of the pool and be like, man, this one company in China has 28 customers, but it's going to be the new Tesla. And guess what we do? We take all of our money, we place it there, and we burn through a bunch of our capital. Risk mitigation is everything. Only use 4% of your capital once you have an amazing trade. This is a great quote that I want you guys to see. Many have ambition, few follow process. The process is everything. It didn't work in Philadelphia, but in trading, if you stick to your plan, I promise you, you will see the results that you want to get. Sticking to process without ambition will still lead to success, uh, excuse me, to successful outcomes. And you see it in us and how I execute and content. You see it in Troy and Rashad every week. You see it in Trap. You see it with John Henry's, you see it with Matty J. Like everyone, if you go through their post and content, you can see everyone's following a similar plan to get to what their measurement of success is. And in trading, you have to do that to the team and investing. Um, how to level up in life, help other people. And I hope that I've helped you. If there's anything I can do better or do more of to help you, please put it in chat. Um, but I thought this was very poignant. Eventually, you'll help someone out who will help you back a thousand X. And that's true. Even in like the, the development of the media content that we do here on Market Mondays, you're always giving shit out for free for a long time. Then I, yo, we did episode 70. I'm like, great. Hope it went good. Shot him my idea. Like, hey, he was, I was shot posted. Like, hey, we want to do some podcasts. I was like, you, yeah, right here. Right. But there was probably 9,000 people that I helped with investing before then. So you don't always get your blessings back from the people that you help. But sometimes when you give those blessings and help in advance, they'll come somewhere else. And that's a very big key to being able to level up. Um, who we are with is who we become. So select your friends carefully. When I was going through my notes, which I'm excited to give to you in, in full at InvestFest, this is one of the things that I went through and that I had to remind myself of. Like, So I want you to be very careful in the five to 10 people that you acclimate yourself with and surround 
yourself with to make life better for you. Angel investors and venture capital firms, please send me a note because I'm ready to begin investing in that space. Um, but this is the only true way to assess the market. Please write this down. Number one, you have to understand the macro environment first. So now with a possibility of a shutdown, I don't think they will shut down. But if we go through a shutdown again, stocks are going to float lower. Number two, then you have to go through the fundamentals of the business. Then who are the biggest macro buyers? So right now, Vanguard and BlackRock are the biggest buyers of damn near everything in the space. Real estate, stocks, derivatives, et cetera. Then technicals. Most people are debating fundamentals versus technicals. It's not versus, it is, you have to use both. So once you know what environment we're in, what the fundamentals are of a company, who are the biggest players that are going to prop those assets up, then you can get to technicals. Once you have that, it's incredibly hard to lose. So let's take Alibaba. Great company, good technicals, decent macro buyers. The macro environment in China is terrible. And then we saw two weeks ago, a bunch of Chinese stocks slid. So you have to have safety in all of these areas, these four areas, before a stock can be a buy for you. If that helped you, put yes in chat. And we talked about this last week, um, but I want to reiterate it again because it's the last time I'm, I'm going to say it. The stocks that you invest in long term should also be the ones that you trade. They should also be the ones that you swing trade. And they should also be the same ones that you have options on. People will say this is um, not good because you won't be diversified. Go look at, go Google right now, Warren Buffett's quote on diversification. I'm going to be real. Anybody who knows how to invest well or trade very well, they are hyper concentrated. Hyper concentrated. You won't see a fund manager that has a bunch of money in the market who's very good at investing and trading have 90s or 50 positions. They're going to be leveled down to probably 12 or 13 max. The ones that do really well, probably eight. Um, and I've said it before, you can only know everything about five to seven stocks. Please put in chat, what are the five stocks that you know the most about? Once you have supreme focus, you can get supreme gains, which will help you build supreme wealth. And you have the right to do whatever you want to do and go about it a different way. But if you do, the results may not be that good. Um, I want to stress the golden rules of re retirement. Once again, I want you to spend a block of time, four hours with your family and friends, four hours working on the things that you love, four hours on your health, and then four hours on creativity. Please do not let people rob you of your time. Here are the five ways to get it to the market. Please screenshot this. The 72 EMA, the 200 EMA, the 400 EMA. Now, the 400 EMA is like a proverbial low to boat area. So if it ever drops that low, that's where you can get in. Fibonacci retracements. We gave you a couple of places, the 23.6 and the 50. Kayla, don't worry. I won't give out our custom levels. And then the yearly open. I also gave away another one on the Mark Cuban episode that I swear I would never talk about again. And then also... One way that we always talk about, and Rashad brings it up probably every episode, dollar cost averaging, or just think of it buying every month. So two Saturdays ago, people was like, hey, I don't know how to buy. Here it is. But even if you do nothing else, but just buy the ones that you love, that you know are going to do well every month, you will be good. But stop thinking that you need more information to be able to execute and buy because you have everything that you need. What is going to happen? What I don't want to happen is, from 2021 to 2025, you miss out on investing and you look back and be like, damn, I could have been retired now had I been adding to these positions every month. Because I'm going to tell you, when Rashad gets to that number or Troy gets to that golden number, hey, I don't know, maybe Jamal will do the interviews, but hey, they get to a certain number, it's going to be over with. Cert the same stops. Hey, <laughs> it's been earned. So I'm just telling you, please invest. Safer stocks once again, Google, NVIDIA. Shopify, Twilio, ILMN, and Intuitive Surgical are amazing. Um, the dividend stocks that I like, Lowe's, Costco, McDonald's, Nike, uh, Visa, Starbucks, and of course, Apple gives a small dividend as well. So please screenshot those. Now, this is a secret that I want you guys to know, and I will not even talk about this at InvestFest, so I'll talk about it here and be done. You need to use your day trading setup to get into your long-term positions. This is for my traders who really trade. So if you trade off the 15 minute or the 30 minute, right? Or let's say even the four hour, opposed to using the daily chart, 
to get into, let's say, a Microsoft Apple VOO, VTI, VGT. That's the scholarship. Microsoft, AMD, NVIDIA, right? TSM. Look at the high time frame as step one for true direction. Once you know true, true direction, you know which way to go. Then you want to look at the day chart. If there's upward more movement, excuse me, upward movement um, on the day chart and there's a bunch of green candles, you're good. Then look at your day trading time frame. So let's say you're trading a uh, 72 and a, and a 20 and you're doing a golden cross. So when a 20 period moving average goes above the 72, you want to buy. But instead of trading it, and I know you get more margin if you do intraday trading, but you need to build your base so you can have wealth. Use the 15 minute or the 20 minute or the 30 minute to get into your positions long term. And you can hold those for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. The purpose of becoming a day trader is to become a great investor that where you get sharper entries. And the reason to be a long-term investor is for wealth, but it also helps you see the macro picture better. A lot of you can't trade well because you have nothing long-term going. So you don't know what true direction is. It's not in a five-minute candle. But if you do a 15-minute chart and then you start with the highest time frame, which I told you already, then day, then you execute on a 15. Voila you'll get the, the joy and euphoria of day trading and the back end benefits of wealth. If any of you have ever day traded a stock or an option and you wish you had it for six more years longer, please put six years longer in chat. I want to give you um, a, a site that I love to be able to research stocks and give you some ideas. So go to Wall Street Zen. I want you to then click on stock ideas and then you can click on dividends. You can click on founder led companies. But the area that I really like is exceptional growth. If you go through this site and dig through really deep, you'll probably have 40 or 50 different stocks in which you can analyze and add to your watch list that will help. Absolutely amazing. There's a fee for it, but even the free version is absolutely amazing. Go to Wall Street Zen and you'll lock it out. Um, knock it out. I'm going to say this. Please listen to every, every episode if you want to be rich. Like we, I think we've answered and covered almost everything that we could. But if you go back in particular... Listen to both of Bonowin's episodes. Listen to the Mark Cuban episode and a Mike Novogratz episode and start there. You will have everything that you need. Only thing that you need to do there is then execute. Um, here's some lessons from Peter Lynch that I think are incredibly important. So you want to look for a company's cash position on the balance sheet. A strong cash position affords a company the financial stability and can represent a built-in discount for investors on the stock, right? That is, that is so key. Lesson number two from Peter, the debt factor. Check to see if the company has a significant long-term debt on its balance sheet. If it does, this could be a considerable disadvantage when the business is good or bad because it can't pay the interest expense back. So those are two factors in the macro of the fundamentals that you're doing that you want to consider when you are evaluating the company. And uh, some of you have been asking me because of the drop that we had in China, is this the death of Chinese stocks? No. But it's clearly the reason, the main reason why I've been saying for weeks that I do not love the space. I think Alibaba is amazing. Um, I even think 10 cents should probably be way higher than what it is. But because of the macro environment there and the way that the country and the continent is run, it's, it's kind of scary to invest there. Um, there are some great swing, swing trades there. But long term, I would not touch Chinese stocks yet. Will we shut down again? I don't think so. Um, but probably some states will. Will it have an effect on the market? Yes, we'll probably have a three or four percent slide as a result. It'll be a great opportunity, uh, buying opportunity for some. And if you can hold on for six months, you will be okay. Are there any Chinese stocks that I like right now? No. Um, how do you buy stocks without using a calculator? So please write this down. You can do 90% off, 75% off, 50% off, and 10% off. More likely than not, you want to set your prices at 50%. So if the company gets cut in half, you never have to worry about charting. You never have to worry about charting at all. So you don't have to pull it up and be some great technician in order to be able to get the gains that you want and get into the companies that you want at a great price. But this is the formula, 90% off, 75, 50, and 10. That's all that you need. The biggest lesson um, and a lot of revelations that I've had since my birthday, but for men in particular, the biggest lesson that served me, and I've had this conversation, shout out to my God, Dom, um, we were having before, like everything in my life is my fault, good or bad. And fellas, the, the quicker that you pick that up, 
the easier life will go. Like every interaction, every encounter. Um, when I back in the day when I closed out Zoom on accident that one time because I got excited because the presentation was fine, like everything is my fault. Once you have that extreme accountability, and if you go look at uh, Jocko Willink's book, that will help you a ton. Once you begin to have extreme accountability like that, things will begin to go in your favor. Where would the next big IPOs come from? And I'll give you a secret that I always look at. I need you guys to go look at Y Combinator and go see that the companies that they have invested in that have eventually went public. There are a couple of VC firms. They are one of them. Sequoia is another. If you want to know the companies that are going to IPO in 2025 and 2027 that are going to be amazing, you need to look at Y Combinator and Sequoia first to see what their track record is and dig in there. Um, in this era, I would be, I would kindly and peacefully remove myself from any person, thing, entity that wants to argue, excluding no one. The one thing that I want us to do as a community is not, we can watch versus, but I want us to stop engaging in drama taking in any media, which is a part of our diet that is not healthy for us. And Troy is a great example of this. Like Troy's house can be on fire. I'm like, bro, how you did, bro, it's all good. God bless. Like every, like he really lives that Troy Joy thing to the fullest. And I want you guys to take that in because the more peace that you have into your life, the more prosperity that you're going to be able to let in. Piece of advice, heal any traumas that you're dealing with now for more inner peace. If you need therapy, if you need to remove yourself from certain things, please do so. Please do so. Put in chat, I deserve peace and happiness. I want everybody to put this. Because a lot of times, some of the gains that you that you want to have from the market are not coming because of all the turmoil. I've talked to some of you and you may be engaging in arguments with family and friends every single day. And you're like, man, my trades aren't going well. I can't concentrate to get into the market. I'm like, it's hard to have productivity and peace in a vacuum of toxicity, it's tough. Um, and I want you to take this to heart. Don't give too many, and it's something I learned from Troy. Like Troy, anytime I get to tripping, they'll straight me and Rashad ass too. Like, hey, just stay focused on the mission. Everything is gonna work out. And I'm gonna say this as I wrap up, man, I've given you guys six ways to get into the market. Please put in chat what is your favorite. If you watch this show more than twice, you have everything that you need to get into the market. You don't need my blessing. You don't need Troy's blessing, Rashad, Jamal, shout out Mike. Like you don't need anyone's blessing. If you've done your research and you use that 72, 200, 400 fib, a dollar cost average, and you have everything that you need. You just need the confidence to just push the button by at the price in which you've written out beforehand and you will be good. What are my thoughts on coin? Actually, I like uh, the probability of Coinbase going up. I'll give you guys a price because I know you're going to ask. If it gets back to 230 or one, I like it. And uh, 218.36, I like it. Um, I would not go too heavy past those prices, but at those prices, I think they are, it's a pretty solid bet. A mentor of mine told me to use my money to start a business first instead of investing. Do you agree or disagree? Unless you have an amazing business idea and you have amazing business acumen, yeah, I think you, you should always invest first because let's be honest, it's hard as hell to acquire customers. Um, what keeps you calm when a stock is going to drop? This is my favorite method for staying calm. I write my prices in a journal like this. When the market is up, before I get in, it gives me salvation to look at that. And like, once it comes to that price, I'm good. And then I close out the computer after the trade has been entered. Here's a freebie. I told you guys about FICO and I posted this in 2019. You can add Moody's to your long-term portfolio as well. In unison with and i know some guys uh at the earn your leisure brand said this before networking can get you into doors that degrees cannot the biggest thing i think that keep especially if you're an introvert entrepreneur it does not matter how talented you are if you do not know how to network it will be the biggest detriment to your business like and i, and I know some of you that may be aspiring to do the same thing as troy and rashad you may be like hey Man, I, I got the same camera and the same lights. Why is it? Not? But you don't see. And that's why I tell you guys, like when people are out, don't think that they're just partying. That's why I ask. I asked them Saturday. I'm like, how do you guys get on a call at nine o'clock in the morning? And I know you were out working before. It's a part of the gig, too. So even for my introverted traders, investors, you still need to network because the connection that you need 
may come from a person that you don't know. Um, and three lessons that I wish that I would have applied that I'm going to apply going forward. I want you to reach out to a few people every day. I want to tell you this amazing story about Ari Emanuel from Endeavor. Um, probably one of the greatest agents in Hollywood's history. But for years, for decades, every morning, starting, I think the lesson was at five o'clock, he would reach out to like 30 people, 30 of his clients every morning for decades and say, hey, are you good? What do you need help with? It may not have the biggest benefit in the first 20 days, but what do you think after two years? Because let's be honest, we all do business with people and we don't hear from them until it's time to pay. How does that make you feel? But if people are constantly checking on you, it makes a hell of a difference. Reach out to family and friends every day and then send out thank you cards and or gifts every single day. It will have an, a tremendous impact on you. Time is what the wealthy acquire and is the only non-replenishable asset. So the money part, especially if you're struggling, I know it's hard to hear the time is more important because you, you need the money now. But I'll tell you, when you go to a funeral, and I've said this before, you won't be thinking about money, investing, business, any of this. You would have just wished that you had more time with the people that you love. In late 2018, Roku fell from $73 to $27. Uh, bucks. Those who sold missed out. I have to tell you, please hold for 10 years or 30 years for a maximum gain. Please put in chat, long-term investing is the wave. For my entrepreneurs, you need 28 streams of revenue. Um, I found this fascinating. And I'll talk about this more next week in some at InvestFest, but the Vatican itself owns 5,000 properties. So when people are like, hey, four revenue streams is not enough. Look at what the biggest entities are doing, not what people on Instagram are saying. Um, marijuana, this is not financial advice, but if you are a big believer in marijuana, now is the time to start building the base before national legislation could possibly go through in 2031. This will be a good time to build a base. Now, I'm not 100% certain in 2031, it will get passed nationally, but soon come. So if you're a believer in that space, go ahead. And I want to end up, uh, in here. There's never a next. People are always going to say a company is going to be the next Apple, the next Tesla, the next EYL, the next mass invest. There is no next. You have to find the company if it's even Robinhood, I know people don't like Robinhood, but they make investor easier for millions of people. There is a reason that the stock is moving the way that it has. And, and honestly, I haven't seen that kind of excitement behind a stock in a long time at IPO, probably since Facebook. Um, Coinbase is similar, but I, I don't hear people talking about Coinbase in the same fashion, which they do Robinhood. So when you guys are like, give me the next AMD, the, the next NVIDIA. They are going to be as different. The new thing is going to be as different as the iteration before. There is no new Microsoft. There's no new Apple. There's no new me, no new EYL. There's no new Moderna. You have to find the next thing in the space. And that's why I say, if you go read Y Combinator, Sequoia, Calicanus, those in that angel space and those in that VC space, it'll give you the breakthrough that you need in order to find the company that will be that next it thing in 2035 and 2040. Love you guys. Hope you enjoy it. Put your favorite gym in chat. Love you. And I, I miss doing this live. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If not, I'm going to go back to recording. Love y'all over and out. You crushing them. Hey. You crushing them. Hey. He live in you know Miami. He, 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 he in Houston. He ain't moved to Miami or Colorado. Hey, I'll stay. Well, I lived in Colorado, but I was about the bars when I was in. <laughs> Jada went crazy, man. Like we, we low key need to do a breakdown on one day about mastery of that performance. That was one of the greatest performances. And in terms of preparation, my God, like it goes to show when you prepare and be locked in. And I don't know what y'all doing in Atlanta, but I know what y'all doing in Atlanta. Like it's going to be magical at, at the end of this month. So I appreciate y'all. Nah, I appreciate sure. you. So was that, was that inspired by Jada kids to go, um, not uh, pre-recorded live. <laughs> well, well, you know, I, I like when, when my vocals be like guru master levels, but <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to do, to, to switch it up. And then like, like I said, that Saturday, I probably spent six hours working on, I was like playing the best of D block and Rough Riders volume one. Like, <laughs> like for real, six hours zoned out. Like could have been at the beach. I'm like, nah, I'm gonna kill this. So I'm aiming to have the best presentation in, in Best Fest, hands down. So yeah. um, I love you guys. Yeah, real quick, I'm just do the earnings report because we're approaching the nine o'clock hour. 
And one of the things you said in your video, right, that we should be doing before 30 is buy life insurance. So this earnings report is brought to you by Ladder, right? It makes sense why people get life insurance, especially term coverage, which surprisingly is affordable. Why not pay a little bit each month to protect the ones you love now? If you're asking yourself that question, I want you to check out Ladder. Ladder makes it impressively fast and easy to get covered. You just need a few minutes and a phone or a laptop to apply. Ladder smart algorithms work in real time, so you'll find out instantly if you're approved. No hidden fees, cancel any time. Since insurance costs more as you age, now's the time to cross it off your list. So check out Ladder today to see if you're instantly approved. Go to ladderlife.com slash market mondays. That's L-A-D-D-E-R life.com slash market mondays. Ladderlife.com slash market mondays. Uh, and we, we mentioned it, and um, I'm glad you said it a bunch of times, Coinbase. So on Tuesday, Coinbase will be reporting. I know, what, like we said, when we invest in these companies at IPO, we want to give them about six to eight months. So yeah. we're on frame with Coinbase. Obviously, we saw what the crypto space is doing, and I'm assuming we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit. Uh, and then Thursday, y'all know I am huge, and I saw somebody in the chat asked about Disney. Disney will be reporting, as well okay. as Airbnb and DoorDash. And one of these Chinese companies, and I, I told the story of, of Baidu in 2007 when I invested, and um, I sold it, and they split 11 to 1. And it was like, mm. oh, I didn't even know what a split was, but it was an educational experience. And so those companies will be reporting. Uh, yeah, those are the ones I'm looking at, and hopefully you got some on your list that you're looking forward to, too. You are a Segway king, too. <laughs> there you have it. Boy. So, so I guess we could just go into questions. Um try to get a couple of questions answered. Do yeah, you yeah. have anything you want to talk about before questions? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, well, just do a couple of things. Um, and I'm not sure if everybody saw it because it, it kind of happened right before we came on, but AMC obviously reported their earnings this afternoon. And surprisingly, they said they're going to accept Bitcoin as a payment by the year's end. So by 2000. Uh, right. And so when we thought AMC meme stock can't do anything here, they're making a, a play into the cryptocurrency field. So that'll be interesting. Right now you can go to the movies uh, and use Bitcoin as, as a currency to pay. And they just struck a deal um, to uh, exclusivity deal. Right. So they, the movies have to be in the theaters, I think, 25 days, some number of days before they can release on streaming services. So that was a huge win for them. And, and this is a, a small great news. And then Ethereum. I know you're big on Ethereum. Running like crazy. Uh, it's running like ridiculously. Yeah. Uh, so people have been watching Bitcoin and watching Ethereum. Um, about a month ago, we had Bitcoin at 29,000. It's up at 46. Uh, Ethereum, I haven't even, so like every week I update my crypto um, tally on, on my iPad. And so I'm looking at last week, we had uh, Ethereum at 2,200. I typed it in today. It was 31, almost 3,200. And so for those who happen to know, on Thursday, uh, Ethereum had an upgrade. It's called the London Hard Fork. Mm -hmm. uh, so what that does is uh, it's, it's a fixing the issues of stability. So a lot of the, the issues that people have been having with Ethereum is that a lot of traffic, gas fees are like a lot, pretty high, right? So the gas fees, the, the cost that you pay to make a transaction. And so with this new Hard Fork, um, it kind of solves that issue. Um, and so the lanes are now bigger. So if we think of it as a highway, Let's say it was a three-way highway, right? Now the lanes are moved to seven lanes. So now you can have more transactions. The blockchains get bigger. Um, so you can have a speedier transaction. And in addition, this is key. I want you to circle this date. Circle this date. Ethereum 2.0, right? So they're moving from proof of work to proof of stake. Uh, that will be happening. Like they said last, it was supposed to take place in September 2022. They have now moved that date up to December of 2021. And so that is a big move because you won't be able to mine Ethereum, right? You won't be able to sit at your computer and have computer algorithms. You actually, when it's proof of work, you actually have to have a stake, meaning you have to have Ether in order for the transaction to play. So you're putting your stake up, obviously, proof of stake, uh, to complete a transaction. And so we saw that with that news. And obviously, we see that Ethereum is on a run. And I see so all types of crazy projections, 80,000, 100,000. Um, and so I told Shadi today, <laughs> I was like, look, I got the signal. And so I, my signals have hit by and I'm like, okay, it might be my time to, to add to the Ethereum portfolio. Um, so I, Shady, I, I'll let you. For, for, for those of you who want to get a good grasp, um, you, if you look at backslash ETH and think or swim, you can look at uh, Ethereum futures, give you some good insight. But yeah, my price in 18 months is 6270 21 so 6,270 21 in 18 months. Alice, shout out to Alistair, he's in here. He, uh, they had the crypto club product. Um, so shout yeah, out to what up. yeah, Alistair is the man, so he breaks down things in such a 
simplify way um, because obviously cryptocurrency is a very complicated place and you can get lost even for us it's like a new every day there's something new that's happening so we have to continuously learn um, and update our, our, our roller decks when it comes to, to the space uh, yeah uh, IBB is also on fire recently another company mm-hmm. I invested in that I'm invested in and um, we spoke about a few times on Market Mondays uh, biotech industry yeah. And I think $4 today, mm-hmm. it's been on a nice um, run. Uh, you get some big gains for a conservative investor. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Yeah. So, yeah, you might want to keep that on your watch list or, you know, other biotech funds yeah. if you're interested. Also, in addition, uh, and we said this um, a couple of months ago, but, but we see the cryptocurrency field rise. Um, obviously, there's ETFs that you can get into, and obviously, we set block. Um, and I admit, I think I said it on our, our group chat that I got in there at the wrong time, but I'm in the position. Block obviously has moved, is up 13% over the past week, and DAP, D A P P, another one of these cryptocurrency ETFs, um, is up 24% over the past week. And so, both inside of those, you have companies like Square, Coinbase, MicroStrategy, Riot. Um, a lot of people have invested in these in singular positions, but if you want to you know, save yourself, um, the exposure, this is a safe way to be in the space um, with a little bit of protection. So uh, DAPP and, and Black are, are two, I guess, crypto, I could say cryptocurrency ETFs. Yeah, I see you, you, you're you already calculating the prices. Go ahead, give it to them. Yeah, what, what prices did you get in the Block? Uh, I, it's on, hold on a sec. It's on, this, on my computer. You're going to be good, though. Yeah, yeah, I, I have it long term, um, but I, I was down on it. Oh, I could actually do it for my Four, five, six. Yeah, they, they've had six positive quarters. Yeah, yeah, you'll be good. I mean, if you guys want a price, forty-one seventeen is, is decent. Um, if it gets to thirty-three sixty-eight, I'll be elated. That would be like a low to bow price. But yeah, if you got in, even in fifties, you'll be good. Give it like end of year. We should be at sixty-three. Yeah, I did. I actually did a call for uh, seventy dollars for December. Oh, you'll be good. Yeah, and Dan yeah. said he's averaging, I think Dan said he's averaging at 25 bucks. Yeah, shout out to the earnest that's killing that. Yeah, shout out to Dan. He's in the chat going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you want to open it up? Yeah, let's get some questions. Let's do it, let's do it. Let's, that's just a new name right here. DJ Singh, we coming to you. Unmute yourself, you've been unmuted. What's going on? Oh man, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Oh man, I'm really on EYL, man. That's crazy. Shout out to y'all. I've been listening since April of 2020. Yo, you got that deep pop smoke voice. I see you. <laughs> anyway, man. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna break down what it is. So I've been. This question might be all over the place. So, what I do is I don't teach, but I encourage people to invest because I'm not a financial advisor. But, and I've gotten like four people to invest so far, and I want to continue to do that. But I don't know. As of late, it's kind of been like creeping up. Is sort of like I got like a fear of getting pushed back like if the like if people make a bad trade or if people don't really follow the advice I'm giving them that they I'm the one that's gonna get some pushback and so y'all been doing this for a while and y'all really get good at it all three of y'all so I just wanted to know if y'all had any pointers yeah, yeah I don't t- go ahead Rashad I think the first thing is to um I mean, it's a good question because you never, that's why even to this day, I'm very leery about the advice that I give people. Um, Even like friends, family, like they'll hit me like, I got $5,000, what what should I do? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what you should do. (laughs) That's a great answer. To make make an investment and then it it doesn't go the way that they expected it to go and then they blame me. I never want to lose anybody money. So first thing I would do is I would encourage everybody to make decisions for themselves, educate them on investing mm-hmm. fundamentally, but I would stay away from giving them um, picks. Mm-hmm. I would stay, that's just my own personal opinion because you don't want to be responsible for somebody else's money, especially if you're not a fiduciary. Um, yeah. That's just not a road that you want to go down. That's just my opinion. And then the second thing is I would, um, you know, just lead by example. You don't necessarily have to tell them, but you know, if you, you know, you can kind of talk to them like, look, this is the play that I'm making. Da, 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 da. I'm not saying that you should do this, but, you know, let's just see how this works out for me. I did that with crypto. When we first got into crypto in 2017, 
Um, we had a group chat, all of my friends, Troy, Mike, every, a lot of guys that you see us with now, Ernie Alicia. And um, I was the first one to invest in crypto and I put like $6,000 and I put 3,000 in Bitcoin. I put 2,000 in Litecoin and I put 1,000 in uh, Ethereum. Ethereum. No, 2,000 Ethereum, 1,000 Litecoin. So I told them like, look, I'm not telling y'all to invest in this, but this is what I'm doing. I'm still learning about the space. If y'all interested, this is just what I'm doing. And then, you know, they all ended up investing in cryptocurrency, but mm -hmm. I didn't tell them to invest in that. I just let them know what I did. So that would be my advice, but yeah, you definitely want to be careful. Yeah, I think that he nailed it. It's really just leading by example. Even if you listen to the things that we say, most of the times we'll tell you what we're actually doing, not that you should. Mm -hmm. These are the things that we're investing in. Because a lot of times people feel very cautious and they feel apprehensive about doing things. And so if you see somebody do it and have success, you're more likely or inclined to do it. And so we're very careful about that. And even in our group chats, like, we'll, like yeah, this is what we're doing. Um, these are the plays that we're making. Not to saying that you have to, because uh, everybody's situation is different, but it's just like, it, it, it's a form of guidance without actually saying, do this. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah, I, I appreciate y'all. I, I was trying to, was you, trying to start you young. Quick question. What, yep. Why do you want to tell them where to get in or what to get? Like, what's the motivation behind it before I answer? What what I do is, okay, so um, uh, let me get a little look back. I'm only 19 and I've been, I've been doing this since I was, so I've, I've been doing this since I was like 16. But what I've been doing as of recently is I've just been like, um, like I put, I put presentations together and I'll tell people like, this is what I look for in a stock and I got the three C's as someone came up with current competitive edge and cash. That's what I've been trying That's to good. do. That's and good. I try to give away from giving picks. Like I'll use examples, like the main example I use is Nike. Mm -hmm. And but yeah, like I don't really try to tell people where I'm just trying to get people into it because I was, I, I found out about investing on accident. And so I, I know it's important now and I'm trying mm -hmm. to get other people in to realize that this is a way. I'll tell you this, um, even with Market Monday is like, for me, my, my motivation to do it was to help. The back end was career-wise. So like being of a darker hue, when I went to certain meetings, people were like, mm, you didn't know. So I'm like, if I tell you every week and make these calls and tell you where shit is going to go, the meetings go a little bit different. I would tell you though, you have to be get careful and like look at Rashad's face, play this back when he was like, I'm very leery of. Why? the downside risk of getting sued is tremendous. That's why even like from a strategic standpoint, it would take an act of God for Apple and Microsoft and VO to go out of business at the same time. The problem, like I've calculated it, is less than half of one of a half of a percent. Certain shit I will not say publicly about what I like. When you're like, hey, what do you like? Neo, da, da, da. listen, no. The best advice I can give you is to execute and do because even the ones that you're going to reach, they're going to be inspired by your success. Mm -hmm. You can push them all you want to. It's great generation of wealth. You see me say it every week. And how many people do you know still be like, man, I like Apple, Microsoft. If they can see my baby's account, though, be different. But make sure that you're doing it for you and putting in the work and investing on your own. And if someone asks to see when you show them, they face the light up and they'll do it. But don't focus so much on teaching. Focus on the doing. Like, I'm a terrible teacher. The execution part is the part that I have now. That's the only part that matters. And, and people, people, don't forget, you can make the money a hundred times. And then the mm -hmm. one time that you lose money, that's, the, that's what they yeah. remember. Yep. That's how it always goes. Um, but, that's, but that's great, man. 19 years old, man. It's dope. That, yeah, that's know. incredible. I wish I was, like, tapped in like that at 19. Keep up the great work. Yeah, shout out to DJ Singh. Just focus on the impact of your work, bro. Just keep focusing yep. on 19. They're going to see. They're going to see. Let's try this. Let's try this. Uh, Dan Yet, I'm going to come to you. Unmute yourself. You've been unmuted. What's going on? I hope I said that right. And low key, y'all need to ask Troy some more questions because he a beast with investing, but I don't want to put his business out there. Love by y'all. Oh, Dan Yet. Oh, man. Don't do that. Don't do that. She went to the fridge to get some ice. Mm, no fridge mm. break. We're going to Jerry. Jerry, we're going to Jerry. Jerry, what's going my on? guy. Jerry, what's up? What's up? Yo, can you hear me? Yeah, we got yeah. to turn your volume down a little Turn your volume down. Turn my volume down. Okay. What about now? 
Yeah, yeah you, you good. good. You good. Right. Pearson tried to take your title for best questions last week. What you gonna do? Yeah. Man, that, that was a good question. That was a good question. Um, Here's my guy. Let, let me ask you this. Can I ask a question for Ian? And then can I ask a question for Troy and Rashad? Yeah. Let's see if we can That's get smart. it done. All right, Ian, I'm going to hit you with a uh, trading question, kind of long-term right. investing. Uh, I, I wrote it down. Okay. How do you think trading would be different if people could only cash out their profits every five years? And then for Troy and Rashad, if you were to go back to your investing journey, what would you do differently to balance relationships with like, obviously a significant other, but also with everyone that you come in contact with with your investing journey. So how do you balance relationships with trading? And then for Ian, if people could only cash out their trading profits every five years, how do you think the game would change? You want me to start? Yeah, yeah, yeah you can start. Oh, oh, I mean, our investment Jerry, especially where we come from, man, you, you can ask anybody and I'm sure there's a bunch of people in here. I'm, I'm, I'm an open book, man, I'm a teacher at heart. And so anything I learned, I'm calling people like, listen, I gotta show you this come over to my house and sit down, let's go over this because I want them to see it. Number one, like we said, it's successful, inspire others. And so I, I would have been more patient earlier as an investor, um, but I would have taught more earlier too, right? Because that would be, that's the true test now. Um, and every week we get to test what we know. Um, so I, if I could go back, I would learn more and try to teach more like I'm doing now because I could have helped so many people um, and I could have learned from so many people at the same time. I'm sure obviously if I met Ian, 10 years ago, you know, who knows what my investment portfolio would have been now. You know what I'm saying? So as soon as I learn, I try to teach. And, and so like, that's my, my strategy now. And I've had many people come over and Shadi sent a bunch of people over to my house that's come sit down with me. So that's it, man. Teach, learn, teach, learn. I think he asked on um, relationships. Like how do you manage relationships with investing? That's a good question. Just in general business relationships. Mm -hmm. For me, um, I would have focused more. I would have focused more on investing than any relationship because none of the relationships that I've ever had ever lasted. So it didn't that's, matter anything. Anyway. What you told me? That's He's deep. About like, like personal it, relationship? Yeah. Oh, I was about to say, we still here, man. I mean, this is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, yeah. If we go talk dating for real, I'll, I'll tell you, you got every... I, fellas, I'm gonna be, most of the women that you were going to be cheating on you anyway, yo, <laughs> invest the money, bro. I'm going to be real with you. Like, we want to have a real conversation probably like hey uh nikki might clip this up <laughs> for real like <laughs> you should put Shout whatever out that you team. think is gonna work out with unless you're married put that money long term into the market i mean to run up your point but go ahead Rashad. yeah that's it i mean you know if you find somebody that you can get married to and it works out then that's great but a lot of times you spend a lot of money and you spend a lot of energy in relationships that don't go anywhere. And um, looking back on it, that's money and that's energy and that's time that you could have been uh, using to improve yourself. So hindsight's twenty twenty, but uh, no, you're right. You got it. You know. Yeah, and we're not saying money over relationships. So don't you know? I know cancel culture going like, yo, all I care about it. No, we're not saying that. Just most relationships don't work out. Um, and then there are things that we need to do. Watch, I'm about to like cape for, for the crowd there are things that we need to do to be better men to have better relationships too right but uh, that's why that advice in your 20s early 30s you should be focused on the mission before you're ready because a lot of times like we're not ready for the relationships that we, we say we, we and, it, and it becomes easier it becomes easier when you have money that's something that nobody wants to talk about easier either it's true my grandmother used to true. tell me there's no romance without, without finance baby you're not that fine that was my favorite quote shout out to my grandma rose She's, I'm like, nah, I'm, and I had more when I was broke, but I'm being real. Hey, that's a true ass quote. Like, it you takes have, money to. You can have the you can have the relationships on the back end. Yeah. It's a lot easier, mm -hmm. um, and you're gonna have more fun because you mm -hmm. have money, and then you're gonna yeah. be able to enjoy yourself even more. Yep. You see the strip pole in the back. We about to wrap up this. <laughs> 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 Boy. Um, living off experience. You're living off experience. L O X. L O X. Why? Wait, did you answer the second part? Answer the second part. You know. Oh, um, if you could only take out profits after five years of trading, there would probably be eighty percent less people in the market, and more people would be more disciplined. But the excitement and euphoria that is for the benefit of brokers. Um, and we we're talking about it on a dream team call, like. 
look at what how much money Coinbase is making off not only transactions but staking, and then how much money Robinhood is making off the back end from selling the data, and then trading institutions and platforms make from the excitement that arbitrage of not being disciplined. The, all the real money interest. That's why when you guys are like, "Hey, I want to trade education business," I'm like, "You're shooting at the wrong basket." The real basket is hedge fund, my, like hyper acceleration fund or platform because all the money's made on the lack of discipline. So if people are paying you to not like trading is you're paying your money to not be disciplined. So another company can take your losses and then invest it long term. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Danny said all relationships are transactional. Not true. Nope. Not Some true. Tips are transformational. Remember that there's going to be somebody that comes into your life that shares your vision, shares your passion, shares your genuine care for human beings and for you. And that yep. could be transformational. So yep. then love you, bro. Yeah. All relation. I'll give up every dollar I have and every suit jacket on earth for one week with e either of my grandparents. I like I'll turn everything in. That's just me though. You know, I'm our relationships are not transactions. And I'm going to be real. Like once you guys get enough money, you can be lonely with money and not have friends. Like the thing that makes life great is people that you love. That's why I tell you, like, even if things are messed up with your family, when they go on a ground, like some of you haven't been to 20 funerals. Some yeah. of you haven't had your friends killed and instead of doing it, that's when like some of y'all be like, yo, you didn't DM me back. Like I should have been on the phone with BD and Lucky instead of fucking telling y'all what to invest in. Keep it a thousand. I should have been on the phone with them. That's why I'm like, go execute. I'm taking time, like, yeah. from people that I love that knew me before anybody else knew me and knew I was on his wave when Nas Esco was the hottest thing on earth with Lauren the first time and I was brushing my hair trying to get them waves yeah. like Chicago. It, like, yo, and they're fucking gone over jealousy and hate. You don't get those moments back. No, I give all that shit up to get my grandmother back in time with like my cousin Rick. Like, like one of my cousins, Rick friend Dom passed last week. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, some of us are too young to be dying. Too young. Don't take any of this for granted. No, our relationships are not transactional. I appreciate you, Jerry. Appreciate uh, it. Thank you, my guy. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see who's ready. Let's see who's ready. Let's go. Uh, let's go here. Let's go here. Uh, Joy, we come to you. Joy Ellington, we come to you. Unmute yourself. You've been unmuted. What's going on, Joy? Hey, y'all. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Yeah. Oh, everything's good. So, um, I lost a lot of money when I was investing because I was undisciplined and doing a lot of options calls and puts. And um, yeah, so I lost thirty thousand dollars. So um, I wanted to ask y'all about my new strategy that I have. I'm mainly investing for you know how y'all say like revenge, <laughs> but it's strategical. So what I'm doing is um, I I tried it out and it was working on paper. I do the high volume stocks just mm -hmm. every morning. I pick two good ones. And I let it run till either 10 a.m. or 1 p.m., depending on how the day goes. Do they trade options? Not options, just straight shares, because then I have more security there, because then I could just wait for it instead of not never getting it back. <laughs> and okay. so um, it's Are been- Are you doing it on margin? Um, sometimes, yeah, I will use the margin. All right, I'm going to cut you off. <clears throat> Don't do anything That's on margin. Because what, if you're day trading, high volume ones, and not, that's what I talked about earlier. If then your long term portfolio, what time frame are you using to do your setup? Well, I my time frame is hey, check out the stock in pre market, see if the volume has gone up by the time market open. Watch the uh, candlesticks. If it's headed up, bank on it. Jump in. Can I give you a strategy right now to help you so you don't lose another 30? Okay, yes. <laughs> Pick four stocks that you're going to invest in for the long term. Trade those. Take uh -huh. 12 trades on a year. 
and I know I know what 12 sounds like. This sound like damn Ian don't boring or too back. long, yeah. Right? But uh-huh. if you if you're gonna gamble, I'd rather you go get some Celine or go go get some Christian Dior if you just want to blow your money. What right. the 12 trades would do, I know if I give you 12 trades, you'll win 11. I can hear the hustler in you. You'll find some more money to be able to offset them losses, but you, you're not going to make it back. Do you know that most retail traders, if they take 45 trades on a year, that 95% of people lose? Um, well, yeah, I can see that and what I lost, but I was mostly losing because, you know, the expiration dates were too short term. And then, you know, once that's if you trade on margin, the expiration date is even shorter. How, 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 how's the day trading working out for you? Um, for the past 60 days, I've been doing it and I had a gain, um, from my six, I went to 22,000, but then I went back, I hit another options thing. And then I went back to 17. Leave the options alone. And it's not know. hate. It is not hate. I, I'm yeah. telling everyone, go listen to that Bono and episode. Bono and low key ha- from a technical trader standpoint had the best episode. That's why I was like. Rashad, one more. Troy, <laughs> one more question. You put on the clinic. Go listen to that. That's why I told you guys, like, majority of the options trades, you have to even limit those. So if you do four to eight, you have mm-hmm. to be good with being up 400% and not needing 3000 Because at a certain price, it's going to break. Now, if you can get to a place where you win 95 or 98%, that's what I'll tell everybody in Dream Team. You can take as many trades as you want to once you get 95 past 95 percent winning ratio. Joy, Joy, are you trading singular positions when you when you're doing these trades or are you trading ETFs in the option view? Oh, always singular and mostly small cap because those where that's where it's mostly a lot of pump and dump. So I just try to catch the pump and I'm gone before 1 p.m. So so when you were doing options. So, so you doing you was doing small cap individual options as well? Oh no, when I was doing options, it was more strategic. I was kind of like, um, I would literally just follow what CNBC, what the analysts say on there, and knowing that the crowd would move with them, I would kind of just like, okay, I'm gonna buy some options in that because don't, don't, you know. look, I also, I love everybody. <laughs> Shout out Mary, I love you dearly. I appreciate you dearly. Now let's stay right. <laughs> the only two people at CNBC that I would devoutly listen to is Josh and Bono. Yeah, I love Josh. I love Guy Dami. I love Pete and the Jerry. Like, love them deal. I'll listen probably Pete too. It sounds like Josh and Bono. It sounds like you've been listening to Pete <laughs> every noon when he's giving you the volume calls. <laughs> you have yeah, to I'm like, okay, though. good. Thanks, Pete. Good advice, right? <laughs> yeah, but you and can't trade sad. midday. Yeah, you can't. And it's sad because, um, I really been advising my son. He's 20 now to really get in it. And I was too honest with him. And now he's like, mom, you crazy if you think I'm going to invest. And I'm like, I did it the wrong way. So just learn from my mistake. Mm-hmm. So I want to take him to invest fest. Like, let me just let you see like a seal, you know, be in the room. He's like, man, you but, crazy. But, but, but you know how it is with kids. Kids only yeah. want to emulate what we do if it works well. Yeah. The one, the, the one thing that I learned in life from um, even working out, right? You got some people that work out that um, don't use weights. Some people only use weights. Some people do long cardio. Some people do short cardio. Mm-hmm. Um, but they can all be in shape. So my thing with investing is like you can make money day trading. You can make money long term option, short term option, futures. As long as you actually know what you're doing, you study mm-hmm. you get discipline. Taking advice, now I'm not I'm not knocking you because a lot of people do this. Taking advice from somebody on television is not really an investment strategy. Uh-uh. Um, so you no, you, it's not. It's not. You can make money doing a variety of different things, but you have to dedicate yourself to one discipline at a time. It's like mm-hmm. it's like martial arts. You can't yeah. do like jujitsu and karate and Muay Thai and be the like, greatest like, grappler. Yeah, you have yeah, to master yeah. one discipline. Yeah. You got to focus, focus on one discipline at a time. So if your discipline right now is day trading, focus on mastering that. Um, but also you should have long-term in your portfolio. This is diversified. And that's something yeah. that would- oh, I do. I do. I have for my 13 and two year old, I have long-term. I have three, um, Microsoft, Neo and Disney. I got a Neo at 
I actually got a Neo at 17, but then I sold it 30 and got back in at 40. But um, you're doing good there. Yeah. You know how to, but this thing I talked about, I mean, to cut you off, Queen, use your day trading setup for long term. You would kill it. You would, like, you, you would, where did you get into Disney? Uh, 172. (laughs) You would destroy. Where do you think Disney going to be in three years? It'd probably be at 240. I know. And that's for my two year old and 13 year old. So I'm not fooling with it. But I do, I did learn about the hard way, like the big drop around um, Labor Day. Mm hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of I have kind of like a trail stop on there for like a five percent or something, but I'm just gonna reinvest it all. I'm not, you know, gotcha. cashing out. Gotcha. So I commend I, you for being uh, honest. I, I want to thank you for being yeah. so brutally honest because there's a bunch of people I'm sure in the chat and definitely on YouTube that would not be as honest as you are about some of the things that you're going through because there's a bunch of people going through it. So I, I want to thank you for being so honest. <laughs> the best thing about losing money is that um, it's a learning experience. Absolutely. It's yeah. a learning experience, you know. You feel uh, like God talked to you and be like, hey, do, do it this way. Don't do it this way, my child. Mm-hmm. Like, all your biggest lessons, every lesson that I got from the market came from me losing. Like, stop field is my worst to hate, sound I hate the most. We all, we, right. all, we all take losses. We just saw that clip, right? Who was that, Young Thug? Yeah. He was just saying that. Everybody takes losses. Mm-hmm. Even even to this day, you know, we might do something that doesn't work out. Um. So never be ashamed of your losses, but the key is to learn. It's okay to take a loss as long as you're learning from it. Yeah. It's not okay to lose if you're not learning. You think you're just going to repeat the same mistake. Yeah, don't make the same mistake. Compounded mistake. Yeah. And just to make it every um, absolutely clear for everybody, if you think, oh, she had a lot of money, I didn't. <laughs> um, I had about 20K saved. And my at the point when I lost the 30, um, my regular bank had like six thousand in it and my kids' savings was halfway gone and they had like four thousand. So I couldn't afford to lose it at all. <laughs> yeah. No, I can't <laughs> come back. I was I was, I I appreciate it. I, I wouldn't recommend it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not recommendable, but uh Joy, I appreciate it. Joy, can you do me a favor? Uh-huh. Yeah. Are, are you coming to investment? I am coming, but okay, no, ain't no but to it. I'm I'm coming. I got a general you gonna mission. You're gonna, you're gonna email info at Earn Your Leisure, right? And tell yes. us the name in, and we're gonna make sure your son's there with you. Yeah. Oh, and okay, thank you. Cause MG the mortgage guy was like, if you don't get a uh VIP, you plan yourself. And I was like, just <laughs> hush, MG. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is what I'll do for you. When you come, if you come to when I speak on Sunday, just uh-huh. stand up, raise your hand, say, I'm Joy. Let me see your son. I'll put you okay. in Star Club and Sniper if you're there for free. Oh, what is okay? That's the VIP. What is Sniper? No, no, no. <laughs> so Sniper is our trading group. That's the trading group. Oh, okay. Oh, club is long term. So I'm gonna put you in both. Red you Panda. Yeah, it's different. Oh, okay. Okay. I definitely will. But do we got to get this, not- this over trading thing under control. And does it make yeah. sense why every week I'm like long term first instead of trading? Yeah, it does. And I and I and I hear it, and it's just like when you hear your grandparents giving you that. Good and advice. I know you don't want to hear it when I say it, but it comes from yeah. experience. It comes from yeah. experience. Yep. All right, Joy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Janet will take it. Janet will reach out to you. We I'll, send, uh, I'll send it. We was in uh, we was in Asia, 2017. I'll never forget. I was on a boat with Jamal, and uh, I'm like, smells. yo, put everything in crypto. Put everything in crypto. I said, I said, this time next year, I'm either going to be balling out of control, or I'm gonna be effed up. <laughs> It didn't work it was out. The ladder. It was the ladder. It didn't work it was out. The <laughs> it didn't work it was out. Definitely the ladder. I survived it. We all have big losses like that. Shout out to all the snipers. If you ever heard stop loss or stop field on your trades and it made you cry, put cry in chat. Let's give us some, some support because there's other people that's going through the same thing. They just mm-hmm. didn't have the balls to say it. Like we've all had loss. That's all. Like when I did that one episode, I'm like, yo, there's some losses I didn't cry over. Like if y'all haven't cried. Y'all better than me. Like, I done did the trade from the boys in the hood cry. Like, Ian, Ian, to that point, I mean, think about how encouraging it is, right? She lost mm-hmm. that amount, and she didn't say, oh, I'm done. I'm never doing this again. She's yeah. like, I'm back in there. 
I'm getting right. The crazy back part, in. we can hear it. She knows how to trade. Yeah. Like, I bet you have some trades. She just got in too late or got in at the wrong time. Because I can hear and just her formulating. I'm like, she knows what she's doing. But that's yeah. that discipline part of how. And, and I'll talk about it in investors. You guys need to play the Calm app or something calming when you're trading. Because all that chatter and noise is not for your benefit. It's not for your benefit. That's why I'm like silence. Like, hey, I telegrammed you. I thought Apple, Microsoft, AMD told you in Moderna, you should be up 700% on Moderna or 1100%. Like my God, like NVIDIA, like would tell you what would crash. Like Doge has not been above 39 cents since May. Y'all said it was crazy. And just hating me and don't know. <laughs> Mike said, I know. Like, come on, man. I'm trying to give you the back. Like I'm throwing you the oop and you won't jump and dunk it on a seven foot rim. Just apply the discipline. You're good. Or you can do whatever you want to. But when we get to sailing away, I'm like, hey, it's been good. You know, try with these segues. Charla, y'all need to sign up 15 years because what they're going to be worth next year. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right. Me and St. Patrick has spoken. Don't I'm just cry. saying. Yesterday. Yesterday's price. Not today's it's price. Not price. Today's it is what price. it is. Shout out to Joey Cracks, EY alumni. Shout out to Fat Joe, man. It's not today's price. Best storytelling. Let's, let's take one more question if we can. Carrie Ann, we're coming to you. Unmute yourself. You've been unmuted. What's going on, Carrie Ann? Carrie Ann got What's five up, Troy? Too. I think that's how you. I don't have a fire question tonight, Ian. Okay. My, it's more of a commentary. Troy, I'm mad at myself, but I can't be because it was my daughter's birthday that you happened to be at Hooky this weekend. And I was like, fuck. Oh, sorry. Fudge. <laughs> But well, man's is out there, and I'm not there to beat him. I'm annoyed. Yeah. And also, on last week, you mentioned Global Foundries. I want to remind you guys that we said we were going to have, like, a symposium type thing on it, and we still haven't done that. Mm. So, Income. yeah, because we still have to have that conversation about um, about how they're going to, well, what Intel is trying to do with them. That, that was a thing I read in July when I was still in Hawaii, yes. that Intel's trying to buy them. And I thought about it. I was like, it kind of makes sense, but... If I was Global Foundries, I'm not going to Intel, bro. Y'all are sinking no. shit. Yep. Yeah, so I, mean, I don't see how they're going to try to make that work, even if they went with like an all cash offer for them. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to, and so the Global Foundries conversation, you know, I was actually having it with um, uh, Baba, who's actually at Dula, who is an EYL app. It's his younger brother. He's a Cornell student and his internship is at Global Foundries. And so it was interesting. I'm having this conversation with a 20 year old about this. Future. Chip manufacturer. Chip manufacturer. I was like, this is, yeah. look how conversations have changed. We used to just argue about basketball and now he's having an internship at a company that could be huge um, when it IPOs. And so, yeah, I'm glad yeah. that you ended up on it as well. Well, I found out about them probably about 2015 because my background, I'm an engineer by trade, but mm. I have an IT background. And they were, when they were first opening up in Malta, they were doing a mass hiring. That was the point where I was like, Am I going to stay in New York? Or am I going to move to the D.C. area where there's more, you know, there's more opportunity for in contracting to make the bigger bag? And I took the latter. But at the time, Global Foundries was offering their 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 uh, employment package was pretty nice. It was like close to six figures. And they were giving you like um, shares in the company if you signed up at that point. I'm kind of kicking myself because I'm wondering like what that would have been if I would have kept it, if I would have went that route, that route. When is the IPO? They, they haven't discussed the IPO yet, but they're thinking about it. They're saying like that within the next two to five years that they're going to possibly IPO. Right here in New York. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's amazing and very impressive. Um, yeah, appreciate that. And thank you for adding to, to the conversation for everybody that's here. Um, and yeah, Hooky was incredible, but it won't be the last time you see us at the film, so... I just I just had to see what was going on, but we'll be back. They wanted me to come Sunday. They said that was the pool situation. I was like, yeah, I gotta get back home. Yeah, <laughs> you, if you had come like two years ago when like they had Kez the band there, that that was a movie, and that that was like ridiculous. Now I know. Now I know. You'll see me then. You're gonna see the whole yeah. team. Appreciate you, Carrie Ann. Appreciate. All right, man. Have a good night. Can we get one uh, more? Yeah, let's do it. You guys should at Lit uh, Global X. Lithium battery ETF to your list as well. It's not a buy right now, but I was going through the charts. And... Let's do this. Let's go to Julian. Julian Dash, what's going on? Unmute yourself. You've been unmuted. Yo, peace. You hear me? Yes. yes. What up? What up? Yo, thank you, you for choosing me. I've been listening for a hella long time. 
Um, as always, your shit, your words always hit, especially when it comes to the manhood thing. I done lost like what 30k, but taking it as like a deep lesson, you know, I put pretty much YOLO'd my savings, you know what I'm saying? And just, you know, got my little 2k and just working that back up and imagining paying for school or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? What can I do to help? Uh straight up. I just want to I just want to get the okay because I already talked to you one time and I wanted to get some cut. I do cut and sew denim. And I got a little factory where I teach kids. I teach kids that becomes not, my not, not a not a little factory. You have a factory. Yeah, I mean it's a real deal factory. Yeah. I just yeah, and it's, I work with the city of San Francisco, office of e- economic workforce development. I create jobs. It becomes my factory. I make stuff for Badu, Kevin Durant. I've done stuff like that, but that don't really mean shit to me. What I'm trying to do is just get That's a okay. little. Be a champion. Be a champion. Yeah, I know. Me. I mean, it's yeah. cool. It, it did what it did, but it didn't satiate my soul. Um, had a little split up with the family or whatnot, gained custody of my two daughters. Um, that took things a little left time wise, you know what I'm saying? So I'm building yeah. up my business, business back up. I put my business on the back burner, put my family first. Finally hit the point that I like I'm confident in how I'm handling my family and proud of how what I'm doing with it. So now I feel like I can get back into business per se to keep it short. Okay. Um, yeah. I was seeing if one of y'all knew about fiscal sponsorships. I'm a, I'm a LLC, and then um, I work with the art gallery, a prestigious art gallery, and they and a fiscal sponsorship where I can act like an LLC. I mean, my LLC can act like a nonprofit. But in the midst of that, after researching, I'm um, ideating a place of congregation for my next storefront. And the place of congregation would have the premises of food, clothing, shelter, uh, financial literacy, and culture. And I'm doing that strictly as I'm talking to these people for the tax hacks, straight up. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm seeing if that even is like a feasible or realistic um, endeavor to go into. Um, Yeah. So you want to know if it's a viable industry to go into? Nah, nah. just Just to try to hack that. The fiscal sponsorship to be fiscally sponsored in order to leverage that to become a church. Hmm. That's not my area of expertise, man. Um, yeah, I'm at, I'll send out some text for you and dig deep to, to help with that. But yeah, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that I had to answer for that. Don't. No, no problem. No problem. OK, bet. And then uh, what medium would I be able to uh, find out? I believe Ian. I guess I guess uh, you're around like a 36 and an XL. But I would I would for the um, the reciprocation of the information, I would be like more than enthralled to make y'all cut custom cut and sew jacket and um, jeans. Just like that. Um, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Just DM me on uh, IG. Okay. I'm a 34, I'll tell you, I'm a 34, 34 jeans, skinny. 34. Uh, <laughs> please. Yeah, skinny. Sh- Shotty's still ready to play for the Knicks, so yeah. I, I know I know they picked up Kimba, but if y'all need to back up. <laughs> 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 yeah, all right. and I got you. Skinny jeans, okay. 34, 34. I appreciate you, brother. All right, yeah, I, sure. I want no boot cut. I, I like the locks, but I ain't, you know, I ain't doing Nah, my stuff now. is fly. You, you guys definitely see I some of my around on some of the people y'all work with and stuff. So just be more, you know, it's more of a reciprocation. What I do is I make the stuff for the artists, but they might have touched my life and helped me. You know, these artists, some of them haven't even been father figures or whatnot. So when I get the por- the chance to uh, cross their path, it's my my way of saying thank you with my art. Yeah. You know, tell so, people your site and where they can contact you to do business with you. My factory called Holy Stitch. You go to holystitchdenim.com or julianprince-.com where I sling my classes and my mentorship where I got my apprentice um, apprenticeships open right there. Um, yeah, it's not a little factory. It's a real deal cut and sew factory. We produce for. Much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm the I'm the plug up here for merch, like anything cut and sew. Oh, okay. um, I, I got another outlet that's a brother like me and you that got a factory out in um, Arizona. Um, silk screen, heat press. I mean, embroidery. Man, DM me right now. Hey, yeah. hey Julian, uh, yeah. can you put it in the chat? Because people are asking for the chat. And then my man yeah. can't shout out to Detroit. What up, though? He uh, said to Google can L3C. L3C said Google that. Can L3. know everything L- for real, though. Kent the plug. Yeah, Kent. on everything. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hefe, what up? L three C. L three. L three C. Word up. Okay. Yeah. Copy. Right. Appreciate you, bro. Right. Yeah. Likewise. Right. Shout out to right. Ken. He won't inspire me to do my juice fast, and, and that's my accountability partner. But for real, Ken is the plug. 
in four years, if y'all see Ken in the Forbes, I'm don't be shocked. <laughs> Do not be shocked. If you got to go to Detroit, man, you got to tap in with that, my guy. Ken. That's, the, that's the relationship. Uh, oh, shout out to Detroit. Shout out to my yeah. man, Chill. He's uh, he's actually I gotta, I gotta go. Call Chill, him. Bravo, what up? Yeah, shout, shout out to, to the whole shout, Detroit. Shout out to Detroit, man. Um, we gotta make our way back up there pretty soon. Big fan. Any uh, last gems on building relationships for those of us that are not as great at it? The gems y'all can give away, not the uh, add value. See, I, I said this a, a lot, but I think I can't say it enough. See how you can be of help. Um, as John F. Kennedy once said, it's not what you your country can do for you, it's what you can do for your country. It's the same thing with just anything in life. It's not what somebody can do for you, it's what you can do for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And if you have that in your brain, you'll go far. Like, how do you how how can I help? How can I how can I be of value? Mm -hmm. Um, something that's extremely important to, to ask. Yeah, with no expectations in return. Just that's because, a good point. Yeah. Right? Just want to add just value. Give. You want to see people do better. I always say that, man. Just give and give and give. How you going to be rewarded won't be your decision anyway. That's in the eyes of, of, of the beholder. So just keep giving. Give your all. Plug uh, talk. That's big. Plug and talk. having good energy when you do it. It's keep, I, I'm going to be real. Like a lot of, and you guys, have, you know, Juice Fast, all that's helped. Like, but bringing good energy, I'm not surprised at the amount of stuff that they're able to attract by just being good energy. Because eight out of 10 people you come across don't have great energy. Yeah. Like, can it hit every morning? Hey, brother, hope you have a good one. Yeah, hey, 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 today, this options, is. futures, real. I'll be like, dog, how are you this jovial every day? That's a different quote every like, day. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, bro, like, Ken didn't text me today. I'm like, damn, I do something, bro. How you feeling? My bad. Like, like, no, bro, we good as it got busy. I'm like, all right, like bringing good energy that'll help you work into a whole. Like, I don't know if you guys watch Dave, but like, be like Gator. Like, Gator's like Dave's hype man. Like, the more pe people you are cheer on and champion, the more blessings you have come your way. Like, it it's a huge gem. And a lot of times people will give, but they'll give in a funky way or like, there's alternative energy or, or like an ulterior motive that they have. Just do it with good energy. A lot of things are coming your way for real. Like even when I met with Scoop, but like sh shout out to y'all for making that intro. Sat down, chopped up, gave him game for two hours for free. Didn't ask for anything. He came right back the next week. Like, hey man, here's how I can help you. Da, da, da. I was like, bro, I was just trying to pour into you. Like give first. That Gary V jab, 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 you know, give and you shall receive thing. And that's true. So. That's a fact, ladies and gentlemen. The, the stripper's coming through. Let's get off. Nah, 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 nah. Before we go. <laughs> Before we go, man, this episode obviously is brought to you by <laughs> Ally Financial. <laughs> Ally is an option if you're looking to bake or invest. Ally is a leading digital financial service company with passionate customer service and innovative financial solutions. They are relentlessly focused on doing it right and being a trusted financial service provider for both customers and communities. Get with Ally to make the most of your money so you can save, invest, and spend on the things that matter to you, man. This has been an amazing one, as always. Sure, sure. Like Shout out to Nas. Who um, King's, King's Disease, Disease too. too? Yeah, that's hard. So I, I just listened to that Lauren Hill verse. Shout out to Lauren Hill. Oh my gosh. Shout out to Esco, man. Yeah. You know, never, never disappoint. Him and Head Boy got some magic. Yeah. Oh, great advice. Yo, he, he was like, they just lock in, no Twitter, no IG. They just get in and lock and go to work. Like, for him to be that great at investing, like, Nas is probably going to take the space that Kobe would have had if Kobe wouldn't have died as like greatest investor. Yeah, Nas yeah. is killing it. Um, you know, his investing portfolio is just immaculate, yeah. man. Coinbase, um, Great. Robin Hood, Robin Hood. Great. He's uh on fire. Queensbridge Capital. Queensbridge Capital. Who would have thunk it 20 years ago? Like relationship working the way into the rooms, and that's yeah. why that networking is key. It's key. Chameleonaire, like chameleonaire. Love you, bro. When you gonna come on the show? A millionaire, that's my guy, man. I spoke to him. He's in Houston. No, no, no. He, he's from Houston. No, no, he out there. He's from out here, yeah. Yeah, yeah chameleonaire, good dude, good dude, good dude. Yeah. Um, I think that's only a matter of time. Super I actually, talented. I actually spoke to him. You spoke to him before? Yeah, we talked a couple times. Yeah, yeah. I spoke to him. So, um, chameleonaire. And Hammer, too, on the low. I know people had them Hammer was broke jokes. <sighs> man. <laughs> I'll play with Hammer. Shout out to Hammer, man. Yeah. Shout out to all the guys out there that's uh, doing their thing in, in the investing world. Um, Absolutely. Carmelo Anthony, he's making yeah. a lot of moves. Yeah. LeBron James, of course. 
Kevin yeah. Durant, of course. Um, it's a lot, a yeah. lot of people in the entertainment and sports. Yeah, Rihanna hit that Billy. Mo- That's a fact. Congratulations to that girl. We, yeah. we, we, need that, we need that conversation. Yo, run this town. Yeah. Run this town, the song. For real. Billionaires on the same song. <laughs> That's you crazy. Are that you keep, stay close. Incredible. But Rihanna, if you're listening, um, I've been a huge supporter, fan for <laughs> forever. Uh, we have to make this happen. EYL, Rihanna, billion dollar conversation. Yeah. Uh, we're coming to Bahamas. Yeah. We'll do it there. It'd be nice speaking yeah. into existence. So you're going to do like the Snow Rihanna mashup? That'd be a hard mashup too, though. Rock Nation, give us a call. <laughs> hey, yeah, Rock Nation. Look, I gave y'all the, the ooh, low give key. And y'all yeah. do know with it. Like, y'all should have turned Capital Coin to Hope Coin, but y'all, you know, what, what my black ass know? Everything. <laughs> Everything. That's a fact. Like, yeah. All right. Ah, uh, another. I'm gonna let y'all get to it. I probably I know I ain't gonna hear from y'all tonight, so I'll call y'all tomorrow. See how the day went. You know what I mean? <laughs> Party time. Ew, so, uh, Red Panda call tomorrow at 3 p.m. Uh, not tonight. Um, but yeah, y'all enjoy. I appreciate y'all. All right, y'all. Y'all be safe. Love is love, man. As always. Reach out, call somebody. Uh, one conversation can change the trajectory of somebody's life, including yours. Uh, yeah. so, so you take advantage of that. All right, rest Let in me peace. get that denim jacket. Rest, rest in peace to, to Chucky Thompson. Rest in peace to Chucky Thompson. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, intricate in uh, the sound of music, especially R&B and hip hop in the early 90s. That's crazy. You that bad boy era, you know who Chucky Thompson is. Yeah, uh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, we, yeah, he passed away today. So rest in peace to Chucky Thompson. Uh, condolences to his family and, and everyone that he was close to. Uh, and his friends as well. So love is y'all, y'all. Be good to each other. Love on each other. We'll see y'all next week. Peace.